say that British food can be a stodgy fare, but in the last few years, there's been a transformation on the food scene, especially in London. The city is a melting pot of cuisines with a number of new refined eateries rivaling some of the best restaurants in the world. To check in on some of the must-try places to eat while in London, we're joined by Adam Ford of the Big Bus Tour and Travel Guide. Adam, good to see you there. Welcome to the program. Hi, Nadine. You've been visiting London for many years. So tell us, how in your experience has the food scene really changed there? And when did things really start to change? Yeah, you know what? I worked in one of London's top restaurants in the 1990s, the end of the 1990s uh, at the Savoy. And all anybody was interested in and all we served was roast beef. That was it. <laughs> uh, how things have changed. And I think we've really got the rise of the celebrity chef to thank for that. Now, love them or loathe them, I think we've got to love them in this case. They've really uh, brought food to the fore in the capital. We're seeing a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity. I've got five restaurants for you, which will just give you a bit of a cross, a broad cross section, a broad taste of some of what's going on in the capital today. It's fantastic. Okay, so then let's, can we start with a celebrity chef offering? Because if you're in the city, perhaps you want to, I mean, where do you go? Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's start with Gordon Ramsay, uh, one of the best known celebrity chefs, of course. Uh, now, he's got, I think, about 11 eateries across London, which is pretty staggering when you think about it. You're always going to be close to at least one of them. Uh, have a look at the Hedden Street Kitchen, which is just a stone's throw from Oxford Street. Uh, it was a bit, got off to a bit of a shaky start, but the reviews have really improved. Um, I absolutely loved it. There's a few surprises on the menu. It's got that whole sort of industrial vibe going on, lots of exposed pipes and metal. We're all sort of familiar with the way that works these days. Mm -hmm. But yeah, go along with an open mind, uh, have fun, you'll enjoy it. That's the Hedden Street Kitchen. Now, one of the trends that we've seen around the globe are these pop-up kitchens. Is that taking mm. off in London? Yeah, uh, have a look at a place called Carousel. Now, this is not technically a pop-up. It does have a permanent home. But what does change is the chefs. So uh, the chefs come in from around the UK, also Europe and, and abroad, I have to further abroad, I have to say, uh, to do two-week residencies at Carousel. It's communal dining. They have one sitting at night, which starts at 7.30. Uh, it's four courses for £40, which is a fantastic dinner deal for something of this standard. Uh, everybody gets served at the same time. You're all sort of seated around around large tables. It's not a massive place, but each course is served one after the other to everybody. Uh, just really innovative, really inventive. Uh, check their website if you want to see who's coming up for a residency. But that's Carousel. You'll find them at Marlebone. And um, are there any sort of old favourites that perhaps you knew when you were living and working in London that you still go back to to pay a visit? Yeah, there are a few old favourites, I've got to say, Nadine. And one of the ones that uh, I'll just mention quickly is uh, Dons Le Noir. Now, this opened back in... Uh, it was about 10 years ago, actually. Uh, it was a Parisian import to London. It didn't, again, get off to a great start. The reviews weren't fantastic. It could have something to do with the uh, London-Paris rivalry. But things have improved. It's really hit its stride. Now, what's interesting about this restaurant is that you're served by vision-impaired waiters in complete darkness. And when I say ah. darkness, I mean it is pitch black. You cannot see your hand in front of your face. Uh, they serve wine in plastic beakers and you get sort of blunt cutlery, which is probably a good thing. Uh, you've got four choices on the menu. Uh, red for meat, blue for fish, green for vegetable and white for the chef's choice. Beyond that, it's up to your four remaining senses to sort of interpret the menu. Now, sounds a little bit gimmicky, but I absolutely loved it. It was phenomenal. You'll find uh, Dons Le Noir over at Farringdon. I did one of those in Toronto and yeah, what an mm. interesting experience it was. Although yeah. I can't say I'd write home about the food, but regardless. <laughs> so if you would like, you know, traditional British fare, are you hitting pubs or, or you know, how is the scene sort of adjusting for, for that still, you know, those cravings that still hit you? Yeah, look, I've got a great spot for you for traditional fare, uh, with a slight twist, I've got to say. Head for a place called Bob Bob Ricard in Soho. Now, this is renowned as a bit of a celebrity hangout. It's priced accordingly, but don't let that put you off because it is a lot of fun if you're looking for something special to do. Uh, there's a bit of a sense of the bizarre going on here. Uh, it's a little bit Austin Powers. They've got an interior that reminds you of sort of the Pullman car from the Orient Express. Everybody gets a booth. Uh, I think we saw a shot there. There's a, a button that you, says push for champagne, mm -hmm. which is a little bit dangerous. Uh, waiters in pink waistcoats. They do traditional British fare with a Russian-inspired twist, if you can believe. Uh, 
again, a lot of fun. Uh, Bob Bob Ricard at Soho. I okay. can't recommend it highly enough. Yeah. So what if we want to uh, lift uh, the level up even from there? Is there any sort of posh dining that we can't miss out on? Yeah, yeah. You know what? If you really want to push the boat out, uh, boat out, I should say, have a look at Elaine Ducasse at the Dorchester. Now, I think there's only two or three three-star Michelin restaurants in London. This is one of them, and deservedly so. Consistently rated as, as London's top eatery. Uh, but having said that, they do a fantastic lunch deal, which is three courses along with two glasses of wine for £60, which when you think about it, for a, a dining experience at this level is great value. Uh, it's French cuisine served in a very sophisticated setting. Uh, the dinner menu is also a set menu, uh, local produce paired with fine wines. I do say good day to Chris Bothwell. He's the Australian head sommelier at uh, Alain Ducasse, probably, you know, the top sommelier posting anywhere in the world. But yeah, if you're interested in Posh Nosh, that is certainly a place to head. <laughs> well, Adam, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming in and yeah, taking us on a culinary tour of London. My pleasure, Nadine.